Hi, I'm Ron Polk, designer of the Polk Workbench and Crosscut Jig, and today I'm introducing the Polk Total Station. The PTS is a complete wood shop that's lightweight, sturdy, quick to set up, and easy to move. It's a miter stand, table saw support, and table saw outfeed, and a router bench. I needed to have a, a flush track for my flip stops to run in. It was important that I not have anything protruding above the surface. So I needed to have a, a T-track and I looked around and to get an eight foot T-track for the right and an eight for the left delivered to my door was about $136. So I ended up making the T-track with the plywood I was building the bench. So I had a little more time into it, but I had no cost. It was important to have a flip stop because I wanted to be able to leave the stop in position and just get it out of my way when I didn't need it. And additionally, I wanted to be able to set up multiple stops on both sides for production. If I've got a particular cut I want to make over and over, I'd like to leave that stop in place and be able to either use another stop or just cut to a pencil mark. I took uh, some scrap plywood, some leftover plywood from building the sawhorses, and so I had no cost in the wood. And I spent about a dollar and a half on some nuts and bolts. I even made the knob that tightens it down out of a piece of three-quarter plywood. I also needed it to be adjustable uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, uh, as careful as I am putting down the peel and stick tape, have, being able to make micro adjustments both for now and in the future was important. But probably the bigger reason is, is running multiple stops, you need to calibrate them so they're exactly the same. There are two lock nuts and all I need to do is loosen up these nuts, adjust them, and I can move the flip stop in and out. So to make it not deflect and adjustable, I simply added a pan head screw that once the flip stop is in the proper position, I just adjust the screw out so that when the flip stop is down and I'm pressing against it, it's pressing against that screw. So I know the flip stop in relationship to the trolley will not move, will not deflect. And then to make the trolley or the body itself stay in position and not flex or move, I put a four inch spline in that rides inside of the shop made T-Track. Another important feature for production is having the material when I'm doing a trim package, such as base molding or crown or wrapping windows and doors, that the material be in front of the saw. I made the miter extension supports adjustable so that I can make sure that the extensions are in perfect alignment with the bench. The total station is also a bit deeper than my other benches. I wanted to be able to have a six inch opening so that I could put larger power tools. The Polk total station is a standalone workbench and I can produce 70 to 80 percent of the work that's required of me as a home builder and a finished carpenter. But when it's time to build cabinets or mantles, wainscoting, some of the larger projects that require cutting full sheets of plywood, doing assemblies and build-ups. Then I'll set up my larger workbench. So I found the total station actually frees my larger workbench up so that it can be even more productive. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for taking the time to watch.